She is the granddaughter of Mr. of the late Thomas Cardin, the man I told you about. The man made of bread. I'm listening. Well, Miss Cardu has $130,000 in her fund, but I see it as consider the way you treat her with contempt. I see you're not interested. Now hold on there. $130,000? Oh my gosh, why didn't I see it before? Miss Cardu seems to be an attractive young lady. Please come over here, sweetie. Turn around a couple times. Cecily, you may marry my nephew. Thank you, Aunt Augusta. Thank you, Thank you, Grandpa. You may call me Aunt Augusta for now. Thank you, Miss Aunt Augusta. Since I am her guardian, I refuse for her to be married. Due to the fact that Algy tried to pretend to be my brother, and plus she's 18, I will not allow her to be married until she's 35. Come on. Lighten up. You know, I will overlook my nephew's conduct too. You are 18, right, honey? Yes, but I admit to being 20 when I go partying and clubbing. Good answer. And 35 is way too old by then. I ask that you reconsider your decision. If you let me marry your daughter, I will reconsider. You think I'll give her up that easily? Okay. What? Are you waiting for the name change? Name change? Yeah, Jeff and I will have to request it. Just hurry, because I need to get to Miss Prism. Wait. Did I hear you say Miss Prism? Yeah, she's on her way. I can't believe it. Miss Prism. Please, send her in. Miss Prism has been Miss Carter's mentor for the last three years. I did not know that. Please, I want her to come in right now. What's taking you guys so long? Prism! Hello. I can't believe it. Prism, where's that baby? What baby? 28 years ago, you left my house for a walk with a male baby in a baby carriage, but never returned. A few weeks later, the man discovered the carriage at midnight under a bridge in Bayswater. It contained novels, but the baby wasn't there. Prism, where's that baby? Lady Bracknell, I, I admit it was shame that I don't know. I wish I did. But I also took with me a handbag that day. It was meant to put my novels in it, but... <laughs> I can never forgive myself for it. I just gotta put the books in the carriage and, and the baby in my handbag. But where did you put that handbag? Don't ask me, Mr. Worthy. Please, this is a matter of life or death. Where did you put it? Uh, I left it at the lunch packet at the airport. I set it down for a moment to grab my things off the purse. Which airport? The LAX. I gotta go up to my room and see. Hold on, I'll be back. It's mine. It has even my initials. Miss Prism, I was a baby in Christmas. You? Yes, mother. Um, no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. I, I'm confused. What's going on here? It's okay, mom. Hi. I forgive you. Uh, you don't, you know, you don't have to be embarrassed if you, uh, you aren't, you're not married. I forgive you. But there, but there's this misunderstanding. Pregnant. Bre tell him who you. Mr. Worthing, you are the son of my poor sister, Mrs. Moncrief. So that makes you Algie's older brother. So I do have a brother. Always knew I had a brother. Cecily, how could you ever doubt that I had a brother? Algie, next in the future, I have to treat with respect. Wait, if you're actually his brother, what's your real name? Your parents did give you a name, but I can't recall. Being the firstborn, you usually take after your father's name. He was in the army, right? Yeah, he was. Let me go find that book of records. General Ernest John. I always told you, Gwendolyn, that my name is Ernest, didn't I? Well, it's Ernest after all. I mean, it's naturally it's Ernest. Ah, now that I do recall that name. Ernest, my old Ernest. I knew from the start that was your real name. Gwendolyn, after all that we've been through, could you forgive me? Of course. I love you. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> you know what, Aunt Augusta? For the first time in my life, I realized the vital part of being earnest. Movie's over, right? Yeah!
Now everybody party!